there everybody welcome to the second video of plant nutrients in this video we're going to be discussing potassium um, which is what I consider the second most important nutrient to a plant um, aside from nitrogen being the first now potassium is actually responsible for the activation of over 80 plant enzymes okay now this this one simple little nutrient potassium also helps the nutrient uptake of other nutrients and it also plays a key role with the plant utilizing its nitrogen properly um, but one thing i would like to cover about potassium um, is water transportation and that's why i believe that this is the most second the second most important nutrient that we have for a plant now in order to really get an understanding of water transportation, we have to first get an understanding of the plant itself. Um, I'm looking at, at a tomato right here. Um, in school, we, we dumb it down so much that it keeps us dumb. You know, we teach kids that plants soak up water through their roots, um, which is not true at all. Like. How does water get from down there all the way up there? And it defies gravity. There must be something else going on, right? Well, in each one of these leaves is a stomata, okay? And the way a stomata is, is, is a simple little hole that opens and closes. So this thing will open and it will close to create what's called an evapotranspirational pull. Now, yeah, I get it. That's a scary word, evapotranspirational pull. But let me break it down to you real simple, kids. Take my eco-friendly straw right here. Have you guys, and by the way, my cup is, uh, is recycled bamboo. Now, have you guys ever taken a straw and put it into a cup of water, a cup of soda, a cup of any kind of liquid, and then put your finger over the hole, and there's water in here? but it's not coming out. Why? Because my hole is closed, right? My stomata. Let's pretend this is the stomata, right? And when I let go, that happens. So it's water transportation. Believe it or not, guys, but most plants actually do the most growing at night. Because at night, is when they want to continue to grow because during the day when it's hot and it's stressful they're trying to keep the water inside of them by not drying out that's why their stomatas are typically closed during the day and then they open at night now when you keep creating this open you know what we do is we get water coming in through the mycorrhiza around the roots now the mycorrhiza is a fungi it's a symbiotic relationship. About 85% of plants have a symbiotic relationship with a fungus like mycorrhiza, endo and ectomycorrhiza. We can make a special video about that if you guys would like. But the water and nutrients go through the mycorrhiza into the roots and the evapotranspirational pull gradient is what transfers that water up to the tops of the leaves. So you could actually say that it's the leaves soaking up the water and not the roots. Um, so think about that, guys. Potassium is the key regulator on how those stomatas work. It plays a key factor. And if your stomatas aren't working right, and let's say that they're open a bit during the day too because you're potassium deficient, that means that your plant is going to be highly, highly stressed when it comes to drought. Now, this is one thing, one reason why I always stay on top of my potassium game, um, especially when I was a no-till farmer back in Kansas, is because I know that even if those rains don't come, my plants that have enough potassium are, have a, a more likely chance to survive than my neighbors, for example, who don't really believe in the power of potassium. You know, but like I keep saying, guys, and in each one of these videos, um, it's important to understand the stewardship of these. You know, potassium isn't that mobile in the soil, um, not like nitrogen, for example, but it's not completely immobile like, like, let's say, phosphorus is for the most part. 
You know, so understanding how these fertilizers also move in the soil. And when I say fertilizers, guys, this can come completely organically. I can use these leaves and my compost as nitrogen. I can use manure for my phosphorus. You know, there, there's all kinds of natural ways. Um, Eggshells is pretty good to crush up with uh, calcium, but it's not deliverable to the plant for a while. You can actually pickle it in a way, as I like to call it, where you dilute it down with a vinegar and then bake it out and, and you can make it uh, a calcium delivery to the plant that's right then and there. I'll make a video about that one too for you guys. Sometimes I get some good ideas while I'm just making these. But think about this, guys. Nitrogen, like I taught you yesterday, acts for the soul of the cellular division of a plant, its ability to divide and grow. Plus, nitrogen is also a key factor in the molecule chloroform, which is what, or chlorophyll, excuse me. Um, the chlorophyll is what gives the plant the green. The chlorophyll is what makes this plant a solar panel. And we're going to be getting into all kinds of that. So now potassium, for example, when I taught you yesterday that nitrogen deficiencies would make these leaves smaller, therefore they're not soaking up enough sun, plus they're chlorotic, meaning they're yellow, and their inverter isn't working good enough to collect that sun's energy and create their own starch. So think about this. If you already have that problem, or even if you don't have that problem, but you do have a potassium problem, then your leaves won't look vigorous like this because of the water transportation having a hard time, all your leaves will be drooping. Well, think about how a plant functions. These leaves need to be perked out. That's, every leaf is a solar panel to a plant, you know, and if it's drooping down, then it's only getting a fraction of the sunlight that it would be if it was like this, for example. Now, of course, every plant grows a little bit differently, um, but the point being is, if I let this whole plant droop like it's thirsty, even though it's got plenty of water because it's, it's potassium deficient, then I'm not going to be getting as much of a delivery for my nitrogen. So this is just one example of how potassium plays a key role with nitrogen. So in your farm or your garden or your lawn, you can actually see symptoms of a nitrogen deficiency and have plenty of nitrogen. But... You don't have that potassium to carry it. Now, I like to call a K2 